Hey, this is Kenneth, and today we continue the build for the APRS iGate slash Digipeter. So in the first video, we pretty much just configured the Quotum Industrial PC here to boot Debian Linux and run the APRX iGate software. We configured that, and so at this point, all we've got left to do is to set up the rest of the signal chain, which is RS-232 from here to the KP-88 TNC that we're using for this build, and the audio interface between the TNC and the mobile radio. In this case, we're using the Motorola CDM-750 VHF low power, so this is a 1 to 25 watt model, and I've got my standard APRS code plug on this where the four channels are 14439 low power, which is 5 watts, 14439 20 watts, 14499, which is the alternate US APRS frequency, 5 watts, 14499 20 watts. So when I want to switch this between high and low power and between the primary and secondary APRS frequencies, all I have to do is select one of those four frequencies. So the Quotom uh, Q190S system already comes with a real RS-232 port on it, so that's just a serial null cable from there to the TNC. The TNC, of course, has a D, uh, DB25 serial port on the back of it, but the audio cable between the KP88 and the CDM750 is a bit of a problem. Remember that on all, all of the other, most of the other TNCs in, in, my, in the universe that I work in, Oper uh, has a D sub female uh, female D sub nine connector on the back for audio interface. KP eighty eight, of course, is different, so that's a problem. Thankfully, in the box, it does come with a length of wire with this DIN eight connector on it. But I'm not too excited about building a cable between this and this one specific radio because that won't be very useful when I then want to use this TNC with any other radio. And so what we're gonna do here is we're gonna actually just build a relatively short cable that goes between this DIN connector and a female D sub nine so that we can then use any of the standard audio interface cables. I've built like a dozen of these at this point for the Motorola's plus, you know, for any other radio that comes back to the uh, 9D sub male so that this TNC can be interchangeable with any of the other ones, right? So we're just, we're standardizing on the Cantronics slash Argent Data audio interface there. So we'll build an adapter and then it'll be level alignment on the TNC to get three kilohertz deviation on the high and the low tones. Then we'll tie the whole thing together and see if we can actually hear anything and if it at all decently works. So let's get started. First, looking at this, we're, we're going to want this little adapter cable here. Yep, there we go. So on the DIN side, um, from the manual, we've got ground is pin one. The push to talk is pin three. The transmit audio is pin two and the receive audio is pin eight. We're then taking that just to a female D sub connector on pins six, three, one, and five, which came out of the Argent data manual. And then we'll use my standard audio interface cable between the D sub nine to the Motorola 16 pin to get us the rest of the way there. So we will be chaining two audio cables together. Instead of having walking you guys through and making this whole video an hour and a half long, I'm instead going to just crank through this and you guys can enjoy. So here we go. All right, so we've built the little adapter cable that goes from the DIN 8 on the PK88 side to female D sub 9 
I actually even put a little writable heat shrink on there and put PK88 on that. Not that I think this cable over gets separated now from the TNC. So that way we can now use our standard adapter cables. The one thing I do realize is that these are both male screw lock. So I need to figure out some way to get a female screw lock onto one of these or get a little piece of all, all thread header in there so they can both screw into each other so that you know they don't fall apart once deployed. So that's not ideal. I'll have to do some digging after the video. But for the bench setup, we at least we've got this. So at this point, we can take our TNC here, screw this in like that, and then this plugs in like so, and plugs into the, on the CDMs, it's a 20 pin, but we're only using 16 of them. 16 pin IO connector on the back. And we're ready to go. Kind of a kind of a biggish loop there, but maybe we'll it'll end up rearranged the other way so that it'll make a little bit more sense. Or um, what I've been seeing online is some people will actually mount these upside down so the heat sink is better exposed. I really kind of like that. So I think we'll it'll it might end up like this on the final rack shelf. But Next thing we gotta do, I'll go pull out a computer, uh, plug it into the serial port here, power this all up, and we'll set the deviation on the TNC. So I'm gonna go grab that and we'll get, get going. All right, so we've got the service monitor here fired up and is in RF analyzer mode. We've got the mobile radio set on the first channel, which is 144.39 with five watts. I've got the cover taken off of the PK88 so I have access to the tone level control potentiometer. On the laptop, I've got PuTTY set up, so I have a console into the, the PK88. To enter the calibration mode, I simply type CAL, and then it starts printing zeros on the screen just to confirm that we're on the calibration mode. K toggles to push, push to talk, so we can now see up here that we have five watts out, but there's no deviation. I can then take a screwdriver and slowly turn up the potentiometer for level control and we can see the FM deviation coming up. We want that just a bit above 3 kilohertz. Then spacebar swaps, swaps us to the high tone. So notice that the high tone's about the same. Main thing is they're both between 3 and 3.5, so that's it. So at this point we've got the transmit level calibrated to this mobile rig and how we have this wired up. So now we can refer to the user's manual, which I have here. Back in the command section there is a summary for the KISS mode because we now want to place this TNC into KISS mode so that APRX can control all the packets coming in and out of it. On the KISS listing, um, it says that the following commands must be entered if they are to be changed from the default values. Trace off, HID off, beacon every zero packet. So those, are, those we haven't changed from the default since the reset. Then we also have to run six other commands con mode trans, P persist on, raw on, H pull off, kiss on, and then host on. So that'll place this TNC into kiss mode, and then we'll be ready to have this talk to APRX and get on the air. So let me do that, and then we'll SSH, we'll get everything plugged in and running, SSH into the Quotom industrial PC, and see if we can get this thing working. So, do you know those times when you get to the end of a project and the whole thing kind of falls apart? This is one of those times. So, we've got the whole thing wired up, aligned, we've got the computer running APRX with a serial cable into the TNC, we've got the audio interface cable going from the TNC to 
the radio, I fire it up and start testing it and I realize it's never transmitting. If you look at the front panel here, you'll notice that the DCD or digital carrier detect light is permanently lit. That means that it thinks that there is constantly traffic coming from the radio, you know, from the channel into the radio into the TNC. Well, there's there's also a digital repeater on this packet channel, but that's lovely local Bay Area politics for you. Um, but the problem here is that it would appear that this TNC doesn't use what's called soft DCD, um, and so its digital carry detect to see if the channel's free or not is based purely on if there is noise there or not, which is reasonable in a shared channel environment since it any other things on the channel may not necessarily be speaking AX25, which in this case actually is true, right? We have a digital repeater on there. But it, it's also the case that the Warris radios, their pin 11, isn't squelched. And so what it's hearing right now is the continuous squelch crash of an empty channel. So the only time that it thinks that there isn't something coming in is if we have a dead carrier. So like here's an HT, and if I transmit with it, you'll notice the DCD goes quiet when I'm transmitting a dead carrier, but as I talk, it's sensing the noise and actually thinks there's something there. So the only time that this digipeter could ever transmit is when there's a dead carrier already on the channel. And W6KWF. That's obviously not going to work. Uh, Tapper, the Tucson Dit Packet Club, they sold a state machine DCD mod for this radio, or for this TNC. So that was a thing at one point. Okay, we're done. Come on. But, uh, yeah, that's not going to work. So... I mean, so th this TNC would be perfectly fine with a radio that has squelched receive audio, but um, one of the reasons why I really like the Warris mobile rigs is because they don't have squelched audio. So for this setup, I could either go find a new radio that would work with this TNC, or I can just go find another TNC that works with this radio. The OT3M from Argent Data, which is really my preferred TNC, because it's so much smaller, lower power, and um, gets you know contemporary firmware updates, it does have what have this soft DCD decode where it's actually looking for HDLC AX25 Bell 202 traffic on the channel and only squelches on that. So this project, as it is here, this is kind of done. This is dead, but. I think you got a lot of the ideas here, and the final, you know, at this point, all that all that would be left is you would look, you you know, run APR, APRX and look at its RF log, and then you'd make sure that to see that you have received channel, received packets rolling in, and that you have transit packets going out. Um, but yeah, so this is what happens when you don't thoroughly check the compatibility of everything. Right, it's not the end of the world. Um, clearly, I should just go get find my OT3M, which I actually can't find right now. It is my apartment's kind of a disaster zone at the moment. So I'm gonna just kind of declare this project done. I'm gonna up, I'm gonna edit this and upload this still. Um, but my apologies for the end result here being a failure. So this has been Kenneth. Thanks for watching me work through this and then eventually fail. Um, sorry for the underwhelming finish. But any questions or comments, leave them below. Other than that, thanks for watching. Bye.